time to collect my thoughts about this movie live without preparation like I always do. Huh. It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's Superhero Slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's Superhero Slate. Oh, yeah. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name is Mike Royer. And welcome to the official Superhero Slate review of Marvel's Black Widow. Oh, we... It's been so long <laughs> since we sat down and talked about something of length uh, yes. all at once. I feel like all of these Disney Plus shows over the last uh, year, you know, we've been talking about them at the end of our normal news episode. Mm-hmm. So the first time we've ever like sat down and like dissected a, like a Marvel film in, in a minute, Chris. Yes. And, I mean, um, again, Spider-Man uh, Far From Home uh, two years ago, actually. I think the last one we saw in theaters was what, Birds of Prey, maybe? Um, yeah, I think it was like the last review. We I know we did Bloodshot, but we didn't go see that theater. <laughs> and even speaking of Marvel, it still feels very, very weird because you have the yeah. huge, gigantic event movie of Endgame, right? All of these ripples out there in the world, and then Spider Man comes out, and we feel like, all right, we're getting on our feet again. We're learning how to walk after that intense experience, and then just the movie industry shuts down. So well, we were supposed to have this film quite a while ago. I, oh, we should say at the at the top here, uh, we're gonna go spoiler free just for the first uh, couple no. minutes. Uh, but then you know we'll let you know before uh, the spoilers come. But uh, well, th- you're safe right now. I think it's it honestly. If I was to rearrange movies from Marvel and the pandemic, I would have put the pandemic immediately after Endgame. <laughs> and then went into Spider Man because we're essentially, you know, Spider Man, or and, and if that's even considered phase three or phase four, whatever, whatever phases they're doing now, um, you know, after Endgame, like you mentioned, it's a whole new world, right? Five years have passed. Man. We're Doesn't learning it- these characters. Go, I like, mean, like, I don't, I, I don't have like, I don't have sympathy for like giant corporations that make a ton of money, and even all the actors that are in these oh, movies yeah. will, are are doing way better than I'll ever do in my entire life. But I do just keep thinking, what if this would have happened with to Endgame instead of Black Widow? Right? I feel yeah. like everybody was on board with delaying Black Widow because it was like a capsule movie. We kind of knew where it was starting, we knew where it was ending, so it didn't really matter what? if it got moved around anymore. But like, can you imagine like that year of waiting for? For end game to come out and then it keeps getting delayed oh, yeah. and delayed people would have been frothing from the mouth they would have been rioting like it would have been like holding the doors back for like people trying to get on like black friday shopping like at a target it, i, I uh-huh. don't think it would have lasted as long so uh, yeah sometimes i just think like wow the cosmic uh, universe Wait. aligned just just enough to get us end game and a spider-man <laughs> out before the world went to crap people might have been more uh, apt to stay at home and um get their vaccinations if in game was on the line mike that's all Mm. i'm saying no one's no one's doing it for black widow but (laughs) that's neither here nor there i mean this movie again um just to so everyone knows it's in theaters it's also available on disney plus with Mm premiere access for that static 30 dollar price point um you can watch it it, it, either way you like to right now and that 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 was something they said they were never going to do and then they ended up like a help do it um so that's been um been awesome for that um, I got to go um, see it in theaters on Thursday, uh, and you uh, you had the opposite uh, reaction, uh, not reaction, but the opposite experience. You watched it um, through Disney Plus, correct? Yeah, we're we're out here in a in a, in a large populated area, still kind of feeling out the Delta variant, what it what, what it may or may not do, even though we're vaccinated. So, you know, we figured since we had the option of just being uh, totally safe with the $30 stay-at-home Black Widow price, you know, we went ahead and we took it. And it, it was a positive experience overall. It's the first time I've ever watched a, a Marvel movie uh, for the first time at home. I was able to pause it halfway through, go to the bathroom, uh, re-up on the snacks. So that was nice. And um, I felt like I wasn't losing too much, e- even though I don't have the biggest... A uh, home theater experience. Uh, I, uh, unlike you, Chris, who has like a projector now, you have like all you have all the lights in the world that the sync experience. with everything. You have literal yeah. theater seats in your place. I, I just got like a couch and a sound bar, and I felt like I I, I still got all the visual and audio right. information that I needed to get. 
Uh, we have a, uh, my wife has a friend slash acquaintance who ha- kind of has like a backyard projectors type of feel. So we saw it for a second time last night in this person's backyard. And there was about 15 people there. So I kind of did get to experience it, it in a group of people. Um, you know, just like every Marvel movie, there's, uh, you know, laughs and jabs and uh, quips. Uh, so kind of got to experience those with a crowd instead of just me and my wife. So I, I feel like I got a little bit of, of both, but I am looking forward to going back to a, a theater at some point in time. But su- successfully saw the movie. I think that was the biggest check mark we had to get before Sunday, right? Just actually yeah. see this movie so we can talk about it. Right, right. And, and I went back and, and looked at our notes and listened to some of our other shows, and we were actually on the opposite uh, end of the spectrum like six months ago. You were like, oh, yeah, we'll be fine. We'll be back in the theaters. And I was like, I really want to see it at home. And then we ended up flip-flopping. Uh, which is funny <laughs> but I did buy it on Disney Plus I mean I'm not going to get anyone wrong I do have it on Disney Plus um, and uh, it's on theater so uh, I just want to go ahead and mention um, currently my my boss is out of the office this week due to some unforeseen circumstances and I had to go into an emergency meeting on Thursday at like 3.30 p.m. And this movie started at 5 for me. Oh, my God. So uh, you were it, just like a tap in your toe the whole time inside your shoe yeah I was like okay let's let's get this done um and uh, so it was supposed to actually, I think it was like two to three thirty. Uh, I didn't leave there till four forty five, four fifty, uh, and I was like, and then of course there's a traffic accident on like right when you need, <laughs> I just, you need I, to get I somewhere. I can just I can just see like your tires like peeling in the parking lot yeah. trying to get out of there like. Eh. Yeah, again, uh, my, my little my little hybrid car is not peeling out any tires anymore. Yes, yeah, so I, I appreciate the enthusiasm. So, like, I get to this, this – the road's closed. Two lanes are closed, so they're driving us. They're funneling people off onto the, the, the shoulder on the interstate where, like, three intersections meet. And I'm like, ah, I'm going to be late, of course. It's fine. I get to the movie theater at, like, 4 or 5.25-ish, mm-hmm. and I just um, – thankfully, my wife was there. She had my drink ready to go. We ran in, sat down in our assigned seats. Still trailers. I did not miss a segment <laughs> of this movie because there were 30-some-odd minutes of trailers, Mike. Great. Um, I did get to see the last two I saw uh, were actually Snake Eyes and the Shang-Chi trailer in the, in the full screen. So, um, I, Oh, and Eternals. I, I saw Eternals as well. So that was really fun to see those in the, in the theater again because we've really only seen those at home, right? Like uh, mm-hmm. on our computers and, and TVs lately. So uh, I, other than that, I didn't have any food, had no snacks. Just a very adrenaline-filled rush to the theater uh, across <laughs> town to meet this five o'clock showing. Next time, I'm just gonna take the half day and not then like I'm leaving at noon or one, so th- this can't happen again. But um, I, I just gotta share that like that's what I don't miss about going to the theaters because at home <laughs> you can like you start it when you're sitting down and ready to go. So Ooh. that's that was that. Um, and then of course, um, you know, first time in a movie, you don't know how many end credit scenes there are, you don't know what's going on. And I'm like, I didn't get to go to the bathroom the whole way there, so I'm like, so I'm like, I'm gonna go during the credits, and hopefully I don't miss anything. So, um, quite a quite a sprint uh, that Thursday evening was, Mike. But um, we've not talked about this. We we've 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 shared very little, um, mm-hmm. despite I believe you, me, and a uh, friend of the show Quentin all being on the same thread, having seen it like within 24 hours of each other. Uh, we've not talked about this, Mike. So do you do you wanna? You want to go ahead and jump into this? Let's yeah. Let's hear what yeah, you I'll, think of, the, of Black Widow. Yeah. Yeah, I'll lay it on you here, uh, spoiler-free at the top. Uh, this was a successful return to the uh, quote-unquote theaters uh, for me with a uh, Marvel film. I felt like I got uh, most of what I was looking for. Uh, I, I've been comparing a lot of the Marvel stuff I've been watching lately, especially Loki, to like sitting down and reading a comic book. Which is, if, if it's something you haven't, if you've never done or haven't done in a while, I, I would recommend it just so you can kind of contextualize some, some of the entertainment that you're taking in at the theaters. And this very much feels like, you know, a Black Widow run in, like, the comic books, right? You know, when you sit down and somebody recommends you, like, oh, you should read this Black Widow storyline, this kind of feels like what I'm watching, you know? This is kind of like a weird uh, situation where is it a prequel? You know, is, is, is it a flashback? Is it technically not even, is it a sequel to Civil War? What exactly is going on here? So it's a little confusing when you sit down, you're just trying to get your bearings. But overall, I had a pretty positive time. I don't know if I would consider this a, a top tier Marvel movie. Uh, I've definitely seen more dragging, meandering ones. But I, I feel like um, uh, what people say the most is that uh, Marvel almost always puts out um, entertaining movies. Uh, and there's always they're always on a scale, right? I've yet to watch one where I've just really left the theater bummed. So, uh, 
I yeah. feel like I'm still organ- organizing my thoughts a little bit about the film, but overall, a positive experience. Um, I feel like there's some things that I wish could have been uh, pulled off a little bit more effectively. Uh, I feel like I was left a little wanting at the end. Uh, I wanted more from Taskmaster, but I felt like the film did a really good job adding to the MCU at, at large. Uh, David Harbour as the uh, Crimson Dynamo, as Red, I feel like uh, no, I'm no. going to call him. Red, Red Guardian. <laughs> as I'm going to call him now. I thought he was a great addition. I think everybody is going crazy over Florence Pugh as, what is it, y- Yelena? Yeah, uh, Yelena Belova. Y- y- yeah, she, she is great, which is kind of really exactly what this movie needed to do. Beyond giving Scarlett Johansson kind of a send-off, you know, her her final uh, appearance in the MCU, I guess we'll see. We got multiverses coming out. I don't know what contracts look like moving forward. Um, but it seems like this is going to be her last outing, which means you kind of got to replace her in, in the MCU. And I think Florence Pugh is going to be a great addition to the MCU moving forward. Um their their mother figure Melina she she was Melina. she was yep. in, she was entertaining as well not quite a standout I would say as a uh, David Harbor and Florence Pugh but I had a great time like I said at the at the top uh, it's fun to go back into uh, the movie theaters uh, I guess quote movie theaters with mm-hmm. uh, more of the Marvel quips returning because I think everybody can have a good time with those uh, I I never knew the importance of pockets on a vest but we'll get to that in t- in, in the spoiler cast uh, section but yeah I, I had a good time I I've seen some uh, uh, more negative opinions about the film out there on the internet, but uh, I think that's, that's more the internet a, for you. Uh, yeah, I think that's just the internet for you. But uh, yeah, I, I, this is like a this was a, a, a fine movie. I, I don't think I'm gonna be heads over heels about you know a, a lot of uh, a lot of the content of the film, but yeah. you know a lot of the stuff that's going to perver- to persevere through the MCU, I really really enjoyed. So uh, that's me. That's Black Widow after seeing yeah. it twice. Uh, Chris, what about you? Yeah, I I'm 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 in the same boat as you. I'm overly positive about this movie. This is a uh, a great um like you said this is is it I, I didn't know if was this a sequel to Infinity War or was this a sequel to uh, Civil War, right? Cuz we were kind of like well there's 5 years it could be either one of these, you know, realms. So it's good to know that this is really a picks up from Civil War and tells, you know, a, a nice little standalone journey it didn't need the big guns right it didn't need the avengers involved or, or what's left of them it's still a great thing uh, a great movie for natasha romanoff and introducing this to her backstory and uh, i i think you know we'll talk about later is that it goes from set piece to set piece to set piece and they kept getting bigger every time and that was really fun to see these and they, they, the the pieces fit within the mcu so i didn't feel like jarred like whenever they were happening I'm like uh what about this? But I'm like, no, nah, they've already kind of set all this stuff up here. Um, there's a lot of payoffs from other um, Marvel properties throughout here. But like you said, one of the standouts is not just Scarlett Johansson's Natasha Romanoff, who we've seen since 2010's Iron Man 2, so for the past 11 years, but, you know, the additional characters they've added to this movie, including her sister, uh, Yelena, uh, the Red Guardian, not the Crimson Dynamo, Mike. I'm going to hold <laughs> you to that. The Dynamo is actually... Uh, the Russian version of Iron Man. That's that. That was the joke with that. Um, and you know, um, Melina, uh, Rachel Vice's character, and uh, of course Taskmaster, the the villain. This I I really, um, to be completely honest, prep myself for the worst for literally um, everything in this movie, whether it be characters or, or quality and stuff like that. Um, but I, I it, it it met or surpassed my expectations every time. I would liken this very closely to the Bourne franchise. Yeah, it has, peop- a, it has a lot of those uh, spy kind of thriller vibes. Yeah, I would say more, like, people like, oh, like Bond. I'm like, it's not like Bond. Bond was is more of a, you know, a sophisticated spy who is, you know, endorsed by the government. Well, Black Widow, at this point in her life, is not endorsed by the government. So I feel like it's more like, um, you know, Jason Bourne was trying to uncover his past and, you know, set piece, set piece. It, it could be also, uh, I think, half of the Mission Impossible movies. He's, yeah. like, disavowed and not a part of any uh, official oh, yeah. organization. So it could be a little bit of that, too. Yeah, exactly. They, they really do a good job with that, and they, they really... Um, you know, again, the characters really sell this movie, right? The the relationships we've seen in the in the trailer, like there, there's a scene where they have like a sit down dinner, um, mm-hmm. you know, with with this quote unquote familial unit, and you know that's really like they they, they keep they they all interact well throughout this whole movie. I I think 
to me it was a really good time and it it and it's like you said it's not the the i'm not gonna be like oh my gosh this is the best marvel movie but it's like i think it's above the midpoint in terms of like, mm-hmm. like yeah I, I like where this is going i like what it's setting up because obviously marvel doesn't set things up that aren't gonna pay off um and while i think we don't need to see any more uh retro period pieces i think captain america captain marvel and this kind of set that tone i think fantastic four would be the only one i would allow to kind of step back that far um if it was set in the 60s or 70s or something um but you know i don't think we need to go backwards and have any more prequels if you will to characters kind of along the way Um, yeah i'm always on board with uh moving forward in this timeline and we're getting a lot of timeline love over on loki as well yeah, but I thought a really fun uh, tidbit before we jump into uh, the spoilers was I haven't watched any of the Marvel Legends stuff over on Disney Plus because, you know, you know it just I, I have no need for that content. I know I know what's in these movies. I don't necessarily need a refresher. But when we were at the outdoor gathering uh, watching this film last night, there was a couple of people there that said they'd literally never seen any Marvel movie before, which I really? thought was like, really funny. I almost didn't even want to watch the movie. I just wanted to watch their face the whole time just to see the confusion come over their face. But I think this movie actually would have been slightly OK to watch without a mm. lot of Marvel knowledge. But. We did watch the Marvel Legends piece on Black Widow, uh, which I thought was kind of interesting because the way they edited it is they edit kind of chronologically more to lead up to her Black Widow movie. And they do include like a couple scenes from Infinity War and Endgame, but, you know, it's not a big integral part of her Legends story. So they kind of end it where you see her talking to Tony at the very end of Civil War, and then it kind of cuts to a couple clips that you have seen from the Black Widow trailer. So it is kind of a cool way to, to kind of hype yourself up to get in the vibe for Black Widow. So if you feel like you don't want to go back and like, oh God, when was the last time I saw her? When is this really key into her movie? Just tune in the Disney Plus and find her Legends video or whatever it's called. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was kind of that was kind of fun to watch that before we dove into the movie for the second time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think they did. I believe and I'm, I'm going to have I'm looking this up right now, actually. I, um, you know how Marvel has like the, the similar like art style and all their digital um releases like when you buy iron man or something like that Mm -hmm. um the movies they actually replaced um some some service i don't i thought it was disney plus i'm looking at right now had actually updated all the movies she's in to be like her look from that movie on the cover temporarily like during this release window oh yeah 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 when they were doing the the black widow collection uh they were kind of just replacing the title cards from the movies with like kind of her character poster yeah from that yeah. film. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, Disney Plus uh, uh, was getting very, very into this film uh, because uh, I think if you kind of look at the box office, it's it yeah. almost seems to be roughly divided into thirds. You know, uh, some are a little bit higher than others, but each kind of point, whether it's foreign, domestic, or Disney Plus, all seem to bring in roughly the same yeah. amount of money, give or take a couple mil here or there. So uh, I think that this might be an indication more of where movies go into the future. Mm-hmm. Like we're seeing a lot more people having a lot more options of how they want to watch stuff and people seem to kind of be spreading it across the uh, the gamut. So, I mean, if well, this moves forward, I'll probably still be seeing my Marvel movies in theaters, you know, once, uh, you know, the coast is clear. But like, remember that, speaking of David Harbour, remember that David Harbour Hellboy movie? Mm-hmm. I would have loved not to go to the theater to see that. I would love to just sit at home and watch that so I don't have to waste my gas money on a really bad movie. Um, so I'd, I'd love to keep that option open moving forward. Well, yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about it really, really fast here. Um, currently, um, from a press release from Disney, which you pointed out, and I said it's very peculiar for them to actually put something out on a Saturday morning or a, um, I guess, Sunday morning, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they actually released some numbers. So they're estimating um, a total of $215 million globally from mm-hmm. this movie, uh, which includes $80 million at the domestic box office. 78 million at the international box office and 60 million from Disney Plus. So almost a very third, third, third cut, like you kind of mentioned. Like Yeah, close. Like, not exactly. A scientist would slap me across the face yeah. and say that's not close. But, you know, if you're just eyeballing it, I would say those are, you know, roughly. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's close enough. Like normally in a situation like this, uh, there is no Disney Plus access, um, but and and the box office can skyrocket. But however, this is 
the largest domestic box office opening since um, COVID-19 began and the largest since Rise of Skywalker in December Mm -hmm. of 2019. Yeah, I know a lot of uh, experts have been like tracking the box office, uh, even like economists, because they're really, just really curious when they uh, when the economy is going to get back to normal. Uh, I've been pretty much ignoring the box office because I don't really care what the top grossing movie in the pandemic is, right? I mean, like that's not something that's going to be very interesting in the history books. You know, hopefully once this p- pandemic is gone and behind us, when people are looking at like the top ten grossing movies of all time, like there's not going to be really Asterisk. any pandemic movies <laughs> yeah. in there. There's not going to be a no one's going to be able to adjust you know how you can adjust for inflation no one's going to be able to adjust for pandemic like oh well black widow if it wasn't in a pandemic would have made x more money so it's just unfortunately i'm just ignoring all the box office news because i feel like it's just like count it's like counting points for a game that doesn't matter right now i just think it's more interesting to see that that the premier access is still pulling weight and i kind of figured maybe by this point in time people wouldn't be really caring so much about premier access anymore Uh, but they're, they're still a demand there uh, yeah. which I thought was pretty impressive for being you know kind of um, getting back to normal here in the states at least I'm trying to think uh, what movies were on premiere access uh, there's only been four uh, no uh, has there been one two three this is the fourth premiere access movie thus far um, and um, the first one actually I thought kind of fumbled the ball a bit uh, which was Mulan mm-hmm. uh, last September and they didn't do another one until Raya and the Last Dragon this March. Um, and then Cruella, and then now Black Widow. And the next one is actually The Rock and Emily Blunt's Jungle Cruise. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, four, we, I think we have purchased three of these four. I don't know if we purchased Cruella or not. Um, uh, you know, I, yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, I think that's a, that's a, it's a pretty solid movie to get for that. Uh, one of the other notes was on this thing is um, if you add theatrical and Disney Plus access domestically, it's the only movie to surpass 100 million opening weekend since the start of the pandemic as well. Um, and I believe, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, what's that movie? Inside Inside Out, the uh, My Dad's Legs, the movie. What was that animated movie? Oh, Onward. Onward <laughs> My Dad's yeah. Legs. My Dad is Legs, the movie. Um, was like I think the it opened the weekend like that was the last time I went to the theater um, before this I think that was like that was like one of those movies they moved over to Disney Plus for free like within like a couple of weeks um, to get streamers so yeah I, I think you know box office wise like I said there will always be an asterisk they will never be able to quantify movies I think even for the next six months into that like rate the Marvel movies by the box office numbers. That's not how it's going to be. Yeah. There's going to be another way to do it. I feel like we're not going to have a real definitive headline of box office is back to normal until a a legit record is broken. Not like pandemic record. Like, Oh, um, what's the next, like, uh, what's the next really huge Marvel movie coming out? That's not one of these new properties, right? Maybe the next Spider-Man Sp- movie. Sp- Spider-Man is the, the, like was a record breaker before Marvel owned it. I think it will be. Yeah. Yeah. So Spider-Man, uh, no way home comes out, uh, cracks like top 10 box office for the first time then people will be like okay now we're back to normal because we're breaking normal records again we got to stop breaking those pandemic records because they don't mean anything we're 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 setting records for a bar that only will like said it has an asterisk beside it for the the time being so uh doesn't mean it's a bad film again being on premiere access does not mean it's a bad movie as we both kind of just discussed a little bit so um before we jump into spoilers you know i think uh, if you're on the fence i think we both highly recommend watching this um Mm -hmm. i am gonna i'm just gonna go ahead and lay it out there i spent like 63 dollars after tax for four tickets to the theater right imax (laughs) imax i'm just i'm just saying like and that's in the midwest mike like i don't Mm -hmm. know i mean ticket prices will vary across the country um but that 30 dollar price tag if you have two plus people is equivalent to watching it in imax kind Mm -hmm. of thing so i'm like if you've got the if you're on the fence like should I go to the theater should I watch it at home and money's a thing definitely go premiere access I believe but um that that was the last thing I got to say before we jump into spoilers so uh ready to talk about this movie in full length Mike uh, yes un- unadulterated. full spoilers 
Let's do it. Uh, my first thing I wanted to talk about, this was the biggest mystery that I think everyone's been waiting on to figure out, is what who is a Taskmaster? Yes. Uh, I was looking through the clues during the, the whole film. Since the wife and I were at home, not in a quiet movie theater, we were kind of sharing our theories throughout the film as it was going on. That's something I've really never been able to do before because I would never be that type of person in a movie theater that would be doing that. So that was interesting. Um, they, they give out the kind of like the red herring of using the, the, the gender he, they say, oh, he does this, he does that. Yep. Um, but then I kept seeing these shots of the character where I was like, that's a pretty thin neck. And I'm not saying that, um, male and female, uh, need to be a certain body shape in any way, but especially the types of males and females that are cast in films definitely lean towards one shape and the other, especially in these Marvel movies. All the dudes are huge and all the women are thin. And that's just how most of Hollywood is. So I, I there's a couple shots of Taskmaster where I was kind of looking at this neck in relation to the size of the helmet and kind of the way the armor was shaped. And I was like, I feel like this might end up being a woman. And then we hadn't seen the mom in the film until about right. the halfway point. And I was like, I wonder if this is her mom. <laughs> like, I hope it's not her mom. Cause I, that just feels like the most I've, obvious answer. Uh, and I was like, I don't want them to go that direction. After talking to people, everyone, I think everyone was uh, in that boat for a long time. Um, before you get down there, I thought it was the, um, the supplier guy, Mason. Oh, yeah, that crossed my mind for a Be minute, too. Because the first place Taskmaster shows up is the trailer where he just left everything mm -hmm. for her. Uh, now, mind you, he, he just, he's just a minor character with the whole thing. But I was like, maybe. But I'm like, that's too... That would be too yeah. weird. To I was, I was yeah. playing all these games with myself, right? Because they intentionally left it unknown throughout all of the trailers, right? So I was like, okay. Well, I was going through Scooby-Doo rules in my head, right? You know, who are the characters we've seen in this film? If they're going to keep it contained to the movie, you know, it's got to be somebody we've already seen, right? And then I started thinking, okay, well, if it's not somebody we've seen in the film, who could it possibly be? in the MCU that would be so attached to Black Widow. So I'm not much of a subreddit person for when mm -hmm. it comes to uh, following things that I like to watch or listen to or TVs or movies or wh whatever you want to call it. So I'm sure there might be some theories out there of what the uh, reddits and the forums thought Taskmaster well, may or may not be. And, and, and I, I actually am the opposite. I follow these things pretty, pretty heavily. And I will tell you, no one guessed this that I can tell at all um but because tony masters is actually the person under the taskmaster helmet in the comic books he's actually mm -hmm. another guy who is that role and has been for years um so i think i think the the reveal the quote unquote twist if you will was i think i think fairly fairly un, unpredictable um and and that that's i, I think that serves to its credit yeah, I, I mean, I don't really know if this is much of like a, a cinematic flex on my end, but I saw it coming maybe about 60 seconds before it happened. Yeah. Uh, when, uh, what, what's the villain's name again? What's this Russian Drakov? dude's name? Yeah, Drakov. when Drakov was talking about like, oh, uh, he was talking about like masks or like people in the family and like masks. I don't remember exactly what the quote was. It's when he was there at the desk uh, talking right to Natasha. I was like, yeah. oh, wait a minute. What's the only other character? Scooby-Doo rules here. What's the only other really character that we've seen? Oh, it's his daughter. I bet that yeah. that's who it is. And that's well, who it ended up being. Now, I, 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 thematically for the film, it makes total sense. I have I have no really issue with it. I'm fine with this character persisting in the MCU. You know, this this character has a great grudge now, right? I don't expect them to end up being a good person. I would see yeah. them more operating in the gray, moving forward, leaning bad. But I feel like this is the only way in which the movie kind of was – it was detrimental to the film to delay it for so long. Just because, like, I feel like if I would have watched this when it was originally supposed to come out, right. it, it, may, it may not have been that big of a deal to me. But I just felt like since I had been waiting for so long for something from the, from the MCU timeline, from the cinematic universe, I felt like I just wanted, like – a bigger surprise out of the film. And the, I, I wasn't owed this, right? The movie didn't have to give me this huge surprise in any way, in any fashion, but I, I just was kind of hoping for it and I didn't get it. But 
that's that was just more of the reveal to me. It's not that big of a deal, but I have seen a little bit more discourse out there where people are a little bit more upset. It wasn't this person or it wasn't that person. But, you know, if you look at the movie, the story that they're telling, I think it works, and I it, think I'm totally okay with it. Well, I think it even goes back. This answers um, or calls back to a plot point in literally the original Avengers uh, where – uh, Natasha is interrogating Loki, the other show going on right now, in that mm. little Hulk cell, and he's talking about her, the red in her ledger, and like you know, he specifically mentions Drakov's daughter, and this is a payoff again. Nine years, it would have been eight years later, nine years later of that reference of mm-hmm. getting to see. We saw the event that happened again. I think that's um, again the Budapest incident we've been uh, been talking about before. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they mentioned in that same movie. So I think, you know, again, like you said, this isn't something they didn't need to create somebody new for this because they've already had something there and it works in the history and chronology of the MCU mm-hmm. at large. And yes, uh, again, as we've seen with the goddamn Mephisto stuff, and <laughs> I'm pretty sure people are also going to have the same issue with Kang next week, not being in the MCU, the hype levels, the, the, the fan theories online get out of control and those people yeah. usually are the ones who ruin it for themselves and yeah it's a, in, it's, a, it's a little too much <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but speaking of taskmaster this is something i didn't really notice until watching it the sex time the second time we don't get a whole lot of taskmaster if yes. you really think about it uh i guess you can say she she pops up I want to say in about roughly four scenes, but we only really get one good throwdown fight, and it's the very first one that we see with um, Taskmaster and Black Widow on the bridge, and I love that scene. It was great. It actually made me think a little about the Avengers video game because that's also where Black Widow is fighting Taskmaster on a bridge, and I thought the the shot was great. Uh, I love the the trick. I love all of the fight choreography. I'll I'll just Mm -hmm. say that in general for the whole film, and I think it pays off really, really well in this first fight scene, but beyond that, there is not a whole lot of Taskmaster going on it, here. I mean, we get Taskmaster in a tank, which right. is cool, but it's just Taskmaster driving a tank, really. Uh, we do get to see Taskmaster fight um, Dave Harbour, but that scene is like cut up into like three short different sections. Um, and then at the very end, there's like a short little throwdown there at, at, in the in the debris of the Red Room, but... Yeah, yeah, we don't really get a whole lot so, of this character that was smattered kind of all over the marketing. Yeah, well, I think I think Taskmaster is an iconic character. Like, of the characters in this, she, it, is an iconic character, right? Like, the, mm-hmm. the, the visage is very iconic. Um, when the real villain of the film was, in fact, the Red Room, Dracov himself, right? And this is more of a... Um, a guard dog or like an attack dog, if you will, because I, I, I would liken the, this, this taskmaster is very homage to the first Terminator. If you remember the original Terminator from 84, mm-hmm. like we don't get a lot of the Terminator, but it's a force you're, o- they're always running from. Or like, like when you, when you fight taskmaster or the Terminator, like, the, like you may ha- be able to get an upper hand, but like they've got something going on. Even the the red glowing visor when it's scanning, mm. right? Um, yeah. One thing that was kind of interesting about Taskmaster, especially this being kind of a lower level film, where they talk a lot about superpowers and the big ones in this movie. And yeah. Black Widow, you know, however way you want to cut it, is she is one of the the fewer lesser powered Avengers. So you kind of have to scale everything down for her character. And that made Taskmaster actually feel very imposing. Like when mm-hmm. when when that armor stepped this up the stage or was driving inside of a tank, I, I felt like, oh, they better run. This feels very imposing. Yeah. Now, if it was Taskmaster versus like Captain America or something like that, like I get that they could mirror each other's moves, but like uh, like Steve could just like crush you know yeah. that armor well, if he needed to. So I, I felt like the power dynamics fit very well for the character versus Black Widow. Right, and 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 the Taskmaster suit was left vague enough where it could literally do anything it needed to in the moment, right? Like mm-hmm. um, had like the sword that popped out, or the arrows, or the the, the Black Panther claws. Mm-hmm. Um, what what I would you know um, you say about it is you know I, I I think it was you know I really liked the way it looked and I, I like the reveals. I just wish we would have had more of the fight with the Red Guardian. Um, mm-hmm. Because yeah. he's he was he obviously is strong enough to he didn't flip over a tank but he flipped over like a boat thing right like at the mm-hmm. beginning because this, this movie actually sets takes place in the nineties I believe right like uh, or late eighties early nineties 
Um, and then the catches begin- up. The- yeah, the beginning part yeah. was ninety four or ninety five. I, I want to say. Yeah, because they're they're doing the the. Um, I think it was ninety four because they did the uh, Nirvana song. Um, well, they also had the. They also continued the the Russo brothers aesthetic of the uh, giant yes. letters, and they yeah. did that for dates, and they also did that for locations as well. And I believe I'm almost positive that there was a time at the very beginning place, and it was either ninety four or ninety five. I, I just can't I remember it, the exact. I thought it was ninety four because they w- literally went into the Nirvana "Smells Like Teen Spirit" cover that was like, mm-hmm. the, which is interesting because like they did the regular Marvel intro, and I was kind of let down by it, but then it had its own opening that kind of covered. The history mm-hmm. between everything. Well, well like, I think that was should... like a bond kind of moment. Yeah, well, we can actually talk about the opening right now. I thought the opening was actually pretty great. Like this movie actually starts off very intense. Like this was there's there's not a lot of quips. There's not a lot of a uh, uh, fun superhero-y stuff. It's just very kind of dark the way the movie starts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I I got a lot of the Americans vibes because I just right. finished watching that during the pandemic. All about undercover Russian spies. You know uh, the running away from Shield agents, which you know yeah. that was a funny uh fun little uh, easter egg going on there <laughs> david harbour on the wing like with a little rifle yeah. that was that was fun I'm so talking about with stranger things with him in there I, I was like it feels like stranger things i know it's not but i'm like yeah, yeah. I like it. yeah. well it is funny because the last time we see david uh harbour as hopper in, in stranger things he's, he's in, in like Russia. a snowy russian prison and, and this is where he is where, where we meet him again yeah. so yeah i thought the i thought the ending uh, i thought the beginning was just like very good filmmaking like they set up the tone pretty well uh i'm glad that that was basically the only flashback that we got i don't know what the no. hunger was out there for people to get more of a flashback but i didn't really have any desire to see Natasha, you know, back in her. Yeah. yeah, Like I didn't really care. Uh, Not, not because it it couldn't theoretically be interesting, but I feel like you got all the information that you need out of that. Like, Oh shit. Like if it was an actual movie, they would just kind of like film a montage of her going through training and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I'm glad that they didn't kind of make us suffer through what we already know. It's, uh, it's already a prequel enough, right? This is already a prequel movie set between movies that have already been out. We only need to go back so far. So we just saw the very beginning to set up the family because the family is kind of the, the through line kind of through this whole film. And I, I was going to mention earlier, one of the things about this, you mentioned like when Taskmaster showed up, you know, we obviously, because this is a prequel note, Natasha would live, right? That, mm-hmm. th- But literally everyone else in this movie is brand new. Um, and at that regard, expendable as well, because we've never seen them before in mm-hmm. the MCU. So at any moment, I'm like, oh, they could kill off Yelena. And like, you know, that was a red herring that she was going to take over for it. Or like Natasha's look in... Civil War was an or uh, Infinity War was an homage to Yelena because she's dead, or the Red Guardian mm. would die so they could you know get away like an homage like a throwback to the intro of the film or the mom or something like that. And I'm like, literally anyone could die at any moment. And it was um, not cool, but like you know it was very interesting that literally other than Drakov, like they all lived, even the Black Widows, even Taskmaster. Um, so there's an opportunity for these like. Um, gray area super spies to kind of be existing in the MCU later down the road. Yeah, yeah, and it does make you how much it makes you wonder how much uh, that would uh, be interesting to watch, though, because I feel like everyone's on board with a Black Widow movie, right? Because it's starring Scarlett Johansson, an Avenger that we've been with since right. almost the very beginning of the MCU. So luckily, all of these um, all of these new people that they uh, introduced in this film uh, pop. They're all yeah. great. I'd love to see them again in, in, in movies. But I don't know if I necessarily need a standalone like spy movie like with the Black Widows and stuff. I'd rather have them almost be like the Dora Milaje right. um, in, right. um, well, in, in, in uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier where they just kind of like pop up within other TV shows or other movies. Right. Um, well, that's I think that's the beauty. Like, that's exactly what they're like. We don't need a Black Widows movie, right? The sequel. But like we have Yelena to be like the, the forefront of the Black Widows. Right. Because, you know, she's was like the one of the highest. What do you say? Like regarded as like one of the highest killed uh, assassins or whatever of, of her time. And then you have Taskmaster who can be on that team because of the enhanced abilities, like whatever that may be. But like mm-hmm. the rest of them can be like, oh, you know, we've got people in places across the world and we can, we can, that, uh, the Jason Bourne network kind of thing mm-hmm. down the road. So, um, yeah, I, I really am I'm glad they all live. Now, 
I do want to talk about um, the end credit scene here a little bit because that mm-hmm. does that's the only part of this movie that's set in the current timeline. Mm-hmm. Um, we see Yelena go to the gravestone of um, Natasha, which with her it, dog Fanny. <laughs> yes, and, and they have put this gravestone near her. What um, Dracov said was near her mother's grave, right? The the tree and the hill or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I wasn't sure if that's exactly what it was, but that does make sense that, you know, if they were describing a grave earlier in the film, that's a yeah. good place to put her. Yeah, and, and as far as we know, there's no body. It's right. It's just it's kind of a marker kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it seems to be like a, a very – it could be like her – official headstone rather than like the celebrity one that you know wherever that may be mm-hmm. um but we also see uh who i thought was going to appear at some point the uh valentina allegra um lady uh mm-hmm. so elaine from seinfeld who was in the Falcon <laughs> and the Soldier. this was supposed to be her original appearance and then show up in in falcon and winter soldier now would that have changed my mind absolutely not um about you know the falcon and winter soldier show like her role in it but i think it's interesting she's pulling together not these dark characters but like these the 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 B list or the C list team right these aren't the heavy hitters these aren't your yeah i'm not 100 100- I'm not 100% sure if Valentina dropped information in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier of who exactly that she worked for, but in this end credit scene, she's definitely giving off the vibe of she's not the one in charge, like somebody else she's a handler. Uh, she's working for. Yeah, because she says like, oh, I'd also like to get more money. I'd like it, to get paid more. And and this ties in directly to the Hawkeye TV series, which mm-hmm. we have had rumors that um, Florence Pugh was going was on set and was going to be in that. So well, how much of it is she in there? I don't know. Um, yeah. Is she the is inciting she, incident? Is it not? Is but, she the uh, main antagonist? Maybe she's the origin of how – because yeah. there's a dog – there's a very well-known dog in that run of Matt Fraction's Hawkeye. Maybe this is the dog. I don't remember the dog's name in the it's comic. Pizza, it's Pizza Dog. Um, okay, so it's not Fanny. I don't think, but I don't, yeah. This could be the origin of the dog. Maybe we'll have a nice little moment in the Hawkeye show where the two dogs meet. I don't know. Yeah, yeah a whole episode from the dog's point of view. Um, but, yeah, so there, there's only one in credit scene, which was interesting because I was waiting for the other one. I think the other quote unquote mid credit scene they just tacked onto the end of the movie. Yeah. Where... I, I think maybe this is like, yeah, the, I think this is a good point to kind of just talk about like the ending in general. Cause this is maybe one of the other kind of maybe sour notes I have on this film where it doesn't quite feel like we really have an ending. Right. And I don't know if that's just because how do you end a movie with a character that's just kind of running off into her next Dude. adventure. And then she ultimately demises in a different film. Right. Because I feel like we have like this moment at the very end and it's actually one of like, uh, one of the, uh, I think it's one of the promo shots that were released very early on in the marketing cycle for black widow, where she's just kind of standing in that field surrounded by the rubble of the red room. Mm-hmm. The music swells. We get a cinematic shot. There may or may not, have been some um, Agent Ross cars maybe in the other side of the frame coming yeah, through. Yeah, they're behind like, her. Yeah. But it was like kind of like this triumphant moment of she completed her goal and then it cuts to black. And you're like, okay, is that the end? And then it goes right into the next scene where she's kind of standing in a field yet again. It's kind of, we go from field to field, which I don't know if that was the best uh, creative decision, uh-huh. where she ends up getting her own uh, Quinjet to fly off to rescue her friends. Now, I, I don't know if this is just me. Uh, I don't know if you were feeling this, Chris, but weren't you just kind of hoping that maybe she would have walked in the so, jet and maybe you would have just seen somebody over the shoulder, like in the cockpit. Maybe that would have uh, been Steve, uh, you know, just like, you know, winking a nod, like, oh, you know, let's go get uh, our friends. Absolutely not. Um, I, th- I think that is the, the, the moment where this should have happened. There was a point where one of those jets landed with the black and all the black widows got off. I thought mm-hmm. that was going to be, it could have even been the goddamn Falcon or Captain America getting off that saying, Hey, come with me. We'll run away from Ross because mm-hmm. the next scene that says two weeks later, how did she get away from the government again? I mean, of course she's got the blonde hair. That's fine. They, they showed that early on in the, the movie with find the blonde hair dye. And she's got, of course, you know, Lena gave her the jacket with all the pockets. Cause that's very important. Um, mm-hmm. cause the pockets are cool, but like you could have at least given us a point where she breaks out of the government and does this, right? Like that was yeah. the missing scene. Who saved yeah. who, someone could have saved her for once because if you remember the end of civil war, Steve breaks everybody out of the raft. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I guess we are supposed to. Ass- what my guess is, we're supposed to assume that when Ross shows up with the cavalry, they all have a very level-headed conversation of just like, "Hey, look at what I did for you! I dismantled this uh, spy network that I'm sure was a thorn in your side. So maybe we yeah. just kind of call this a wash. I'm just gonna go off on this motorcycle and dye my hair. I'm gonna meet up with my buddy who gets me a jet, which I thought it was kind of strange because it's like, okay, you see what I can get you with time and money. So I do get the time." part of the equation but i don't know i don't know exactly where she got a bunch of money uh right. for this jet uh, so yeah it, it was just it was a little bit of a strange a little bit of a strange way it, to it's a, end, was, end the film but it's a I, jarring move it was <laughs> jarring I, I mean it's it's not it does it does answer a it does answer a question I've actually had uh, because I rewatched Civil War and I was wondering, like, oh, I wonder how long that, like, Lang and everybody rotted in the raft. And apparently, I guess it was only, like, maybe, like, two to three weeks is what it sounds like. So well, they only had to eat prison food for a couple weeks. <laughs> I don't I don't think, again, from what we know, I don't think Natasha was a part of that at all. Um because well, she the, could have been the she could have been the person on the computer, right? The yeah. the, the guy in the chair, as we say. Right. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, but there's there's no. I, I mean, I know Steve did. It. I don't know if that was. I I figured that would be more immediate, but you know, who who knows? But yeah, at the same time, it's like one of those things. Like it was jarring. If they would have just at least put something in the middle, like like, hey, here's your animated credits for a little bit, like they always mm-hmm. do with the movies. And then this scene, I think I would have been well, like more embracing of it. But the fact that it just goes jumps to two weeks later, she's away from the government. We're not going to tell you how, but you know, this is where she goes into Infinity War. That's fine, but like it was just very like, oh, this this is what we're getting. Like you showed us all these cool action scenes, and you skimped on this one for us. Yeah, it does make you wonder if maybe there was a mandate on high that said, uh, "This is Black Widow's movie." Go ahead and talk about the Avengers. You obviously have to. She's a part of the group. Uh, but there's not going to be anybody else kind of like stealing the show from Black Widow. Right. She's been in this uh, universe as long as anybody else, right? Uh, she, this is her time in, in the sun. She does. She's not going to share it. She's already shared it with literally every other movie. So even though, like, I think it would have made total sense, right, to just have like a, a little cameo or something from somebody else just kind of to kind of connect the these uh these timelines together just at the very end i can kind of get where like i i saw that scarlett johansson was an executive producer on this film and yeah. you know i'm sure that happens a lot of times with a lot of films just so you have like more profit sharing but i wouldn't be surprised if at this point in time with the character and her career she might have had a little bit more creative control so i could also kind of see her going like yeah no as much as i as i love all of the the people that i shared the screen with like this is this is my movie let's just end it well, uh let's just end it, it with me it was a it was a bad choice and they should rethink it is what i'm <laughs> because because it is it is it, in terms of storytelling and movie making it was a bad choice even if it was just a cameo or even if they just put something in between it probably would have made that a lot better but mm-hmm. overall that i mean again we're, we're nitpicking complaints here like this does not indicate the quality of the film yeah overall. one great thing i can say about this film and I, it's something i noticed on the second run through is from beginning to end this movie doesn't really stop we keep going i yeah. wouldn't say it's necessarily action thrill ride you know non-stop right. just like high speed but we don't really really have a, a any down moments where i'm like oh i'm gonna get up and i'm gonna go to the bathroom uh, mm. or this is a good place to pause it you know that that dinner that family dinner scene happens uh, pretty much exactly in the middle of the film and I, I thought that part of the 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 movie was really entertaining because we were kind of all waiting for that right for this family to come back together there's some fun bickering there's some emotional performances we get to yeah. see david David Harbour put the suit back on. So even though it wasn't a uh, nonstop uh, action during that moment, it was still pretty entertaining. Uh, and I, I thoroughly and, enjoyed it. And it didn't turn into an action scene. That was, that was the other part of it. Like it could have, mm. they could have tried to fight their way out, but they didn't. They, they went the, obviously the spy route, which, you know, the mission impossible kind of face mm-hmm. swapping thing that they've, they've set up before. So that wasn't a surprise either. That was a really, really fun reveal. But um, yeah, I, I agree. There was really nothing. I think, you know, I, I was really, I, I think I laughed the hardest when that the helicopter crashed because he said they had enough gas to get, <laughs> oh, yeah. get there. T- and I was, it's like a total dad move, right? Like, no, 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 we don't need to stop. Keep going. Yeah. I know where we're going. And then it just thuds. I'm like, oh, shoot. Uh, but yeah. So yeah, overall, Mike, I think, uh, you know, again, we recommend this movie. I think it's a good time for everybody who wants to, to go check it out, whether it's in theaters or in Disney Plus. Yeah. Anything I kind of feel. That? 
Uh, I feel like kind of when we talk about other Marvel uh, movies, other franchises, I feel like we have a little bit more to dissect, but this is very much uh, the end of a character, right? So, Mm -hmm. you know, we can talk about what we can with some of the characters that were introduced, but, you know, as far as we can tell, it doesn't look like Scarlett Johansson or Black Widow is going to be moving forward in the universe. Uh, I think she's kind of uh, retired. Uh, like uh, some of her other counterparts. I do think it's funny that Chris Evans, uh, not Chris Evans, um, Chris uh, Hemsworth slash Thor is still running strong. I guess he yeah. just really likes working out and wants the excuse to stay in shape. Well, uh, so who knows it, how longer he'll keep, go- he'll keep it, going. His you know? character had a revival with Ragnarok, you know? I yeah, mean, exactly. It, after the Dark World, it was like, ah, we, do we need more Thor? But yeah, yeah, we do. We do. Yeah, we do. and I, I mean, I could totally see uh, Jeremy Renner, you know, retiring after this first season of Hawkeye. It's already very much set up as a mantle right. transference type of storyline. But what else uh, is and he also, doing? Also, he's the, <laughs> well, and he well, he's also the only character really within the Avengers slash MCU that has like an established family too. So yeah. I don't see this character dying at all. It, you know, it just wouldn't well, be worth I don't it know. emotionally. Tony Stark had an established family and he died. Yeah. Yeah, but the family was uh, was thrust his, upon us his, in the same movie he died in too. Well, I, I, well, I think Hawkeye's family already dying once you know, was enough. I think I think they will kill him. Yeah, off. yeah, exactly. So it looks like uh, Thor is going to be our last surviving uh, OG Hulk? Avengers, if you will. Oh Hulk? yeah, he he is still out there. But I guess if you think about it, uh, filmmaking point of view, Mark Ruffalo doesn't really have to do a whole lot. You yeah. know, he doesn't have to he doesn't have to keep doing CrossFit to be Hulk. Right. You know, yeah, really. Yeah. I, the if the character stays digital, you know, which it looks like the way it's going, he might just show up to a VO booth. You know, yeah. they could hire someone else to do the uh, mocap he, if he, he's he doing. Lo- he loves that studio. <laughs> he's he's doing it with she. He's got he's got She Hulk coming up. Hawkeye has Hawkeye, and then you know Black Widow. You know now dead. We're we're, we're half. We're half and half of the originals yeah. from them. I guess that's so. true. Uh, but I guess all I can say is uh, if this is kind of more of a upper to middling. A Marvel movie, I'm okay with that, especially since we got we've gotten a lot out of it more than some of the other middling Marvel movies that I watch. Like, yeah. I, I I don't mean to pick on this movie in particular; it's just in my head right now. But Ant Man two, what did you give me? Really, you gave me a little bit more Giant Man. I don't care about Ghost. I don't even really care about uh, was it was it Michelle Pfeiffer that they saved from the Quantum Realm? Yeah, Who was yeah, the yeah. actress. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't really care about her or her quantum powers. So Ant-Man 2, you didn't really give me anything that I wanted overall and you were just kind of okay. Black Widow was better than Ant-Man 2 and it left me with more that I'm looking forward to see in, in the in the remaining of the MCU. So, uh, overall positive experience. Uh, Chris, you nailed it on the head of if you if you have more than uh, two people, two people or more, you might as well get it on Premiere Access, but it, I don't know why you'd be listening to this podcast right now if you weren't a really big superhero (laughs) fan but you know if you're somebody that just kind of waits i mean it's disney plus right what is it like 45 days that you have to wait until Uh, you can watch it um just for free i I just had it pulled up here um when i was looking up um movies like the disney plus uh premiere access releases one second uh it will be on october 6th Gotcha. I I think you would be safe watching that. The Taskmaster reveal wasn't really as big as some people anticipated. So even yeah. if some even even if that got spoiled for you, it's really not going to ruin your enjoyment yeah. of the film. So overall, uh, positive yeah. marks uh, for for most of the film. I think it was last time I checked, it was sitting at about like an eighty percent on Rotten Tomato. It's maybe uh, like eighty one. It's got an A minus cinema score, um, which mm-hmm. you know is again when they interview audiences pe- coming coming out mm-hmm. of the, the the theater and that's a i mean a minus is pretty good uh that's that's a that's a great rating for a movie coming out yeah. of so what little yeah, people can go to the theaters yeah i'm i'm glad the movie didn't get bogged down with any of the ridiculousness that captain marvel got bogged down with which it like you know the female superhero the nonsense where people where the incels go crazy so i'm glad that we avoided any of that nonsense with uh, this film and uh you know, not the send off. You know, I, I think the best send off to exist in superhero movies would probably be Logan. I mean, mm-hmm. nothing is ever going to reach that kind of emotional uh, kind of climax and just ending. I would say Iron Man is a close second just because it all kind of existed well, within the same I, universe, if I, you will. <laughs> I would give in game um, probably double marks for Captain America as well. Oh yeah, his, yeah. His ending was a little different. You know, yeah, we he, we never technically saw him die, did we? <laughs> right, we didn't see him die, but it still was a send off uh, for, yeah. for that regard. So, um, yeah, people are, are marking this as an origin film. I don't. 
think this is an yeah. origin Yeah, isn't film? it weird? It's like, is it an origin? Is it a prequel? Is it a sequel it's to a, Civil War? Is it an end to a character? Uh, maybe that's another problem, too. Yeah. It's just, you got a lot going on here. It's a little bit hard to... But made, for all for all of the weirdness, they yeah. I think they did an effective job. I, I would look... I'm actually... I would look forward to what... Uh, Kate Shortland will do next to the director of the film. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, I hope they give her another Marvel film, and I hope she gets to, to yeah. press on with these uh, big well, box office budgets. That, that's saying something, because Mike is, uh, as we know, a, uh, a fan has a distaste for prequels, so glad to uh, <laughs> scratch that itch and open that wound. You know, will. You know it, it really helped. We'll talk about this. If you're subscribed to the podcast, you'll have our weekly news episode in the feed. I did rewatch Civil War before I jumped into this because that's the last canonical movie that you see Black Widow in. And I, I thought it dovetails pretty well from Civil War. So yeah. good job there. So cool. All right, Mike. Well, that's our review of Black Widow. Uh, we've got to go record our regular weekly news episode next. So uh, people know more about what you're doing, what you're up to. Where can they find you at? Well, they can find me at Mike Royer Design on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. Chris, if people want to catch up with you, see what you're doing, where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram, Valdan87, or Twitter, Valdan, V A L D A N. We will definitely um, I'll be there. Uh, people know more about the shows or weekly news episodes. We got reviews coming up, Mike. Movies are happening. Let's get into this. Where can people get ready for that at? Oh, the best place to visit is SuperheroSlate.com. That is the home base, the HQ for the podcast. And that's the best place to find all the avenues we host our show, like Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, wherever else you love to listen to fine podcasts. When you're listening to our normal weekly news episodes, we put all of our show notes up there, too, so you can take a look at everything that we're talking about. We also have an awesome upcoming release calendar. So if it gets really confusing to keep track of when all of these superhero comic book movies comes out, we got a really nice, very simple, organized list on our website. So you can keep track of all of that. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and you can get merch at SuperheroSlate.com slash store. We love hearing from you. Please reach out. What did you think of Black Widow? Did you have that Taskmaster reveal um, solved before it happened on the screen? What did you think? Uh, how did you feel about the ending? Uh, how did you feel about the beginning? How did you feel about the whole movie? Uh, reach out. Let us know what you thought about Black Widow. And if you want to be a super fan of the show, all you got to do is share the show with a friend. Share the show with a buddy. Make sure you get your vaccination because those variants are proving to be pretty difficult. And I want to go back to the movies uh, feeling safe and just uh, without a mask and so I can shove popcorn and a slushy back in my mouth uh, like uh, the good Lord intended. So do you want to be a super fan? Just make sure you do those things and we'll be here every week, baby. All right. See you then. Bye. Thanks for listening and don't forget to subscribe. And them good old boys were drinking whiskey and rye, singing this will be the day that I die. I already messed it up. I said we instead of this will. I think one. you're trying too hard. I, th- I think you need to do what they did. Well, just... you know what? Maybe you need to sing it, Chris. I'm no, always no. the one singing at the top <laughs> of the because, show. Uh, and you're silent. You're doing, <laughs> that's because you're doing such a great job. You know what? You can just put the banter. You just put our witty banter of us arguing about it at the beginning of the show. That's no, you sing it. No, you sing it.